Thank you very much for your introduction, and also thank you for uh, the invitation. Uh, this is a very nice place, and I've never been here. Um, I regret. <laughs> Maybe I should come back to uh, take a trails, and you know. And uh, before starting, uh, I want to introduce you. Uh, do you like soccer? No. <laughs> kind of. Well, I'm originally from Japan, and you know FC Tampa Bay. Yeah. It's yeah. professional soccer team in Tampa, and the team has Japanese star player. <laughs> Takuya Yamada is there. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. So Teotihuacan <coughs> is located in Mesoamerica. Here, the map. So uh, Florida is right here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't include Florida. <laughs> And uh, here is Mexico City, and Teotihuacan is right here. And uh, when I'm asked, uh, when I am asked what I do, I answer, you know, I'm doing research at Teotihuacan. And always, uh, you know, they ask me, so where in the Maya region? Like, or, or is it Aztec? But its original civilization in central Mexico is Teotihuacan civilization, and just uh, let me uh, make a comparison first. So here is Maya region. <coughs> and this is uh, one of the big sites called Tikal uh, in <coughs> Guatemala. And they have Maya hieroglyphs. And this is one of Stele. And here is the king, one of the kings. And here we have Maya glyphs. So we know uh, a lot of uh, pot political history of Maya science because of the decipherment of these uh, Maya hieroglyphs. Okay. Also, uh, Maya civilization was conquered by, by, by the Spanish, and the Spaniards left also uh, many uh, written records. So based on this uh, ethno-historical information, uh, we know uh, quite a bit of Maya civilization, okay? And also, uh, <coughs> we have uh, evidence of many, many uh, rulers or kings' uh, tombs. This is one of the examples, uh, a Palenque. So we know there was a king. <coughs> okay, now, Aztec civilization here. This is uh, the capital of Aztec Empire, uh, Tenochtitlan. This is an artistic reconstruction. Uh, this is main temple, Temple Mayor. And as you may know, Aztec civilization was conquered by the Spanish people. And also, Aztec people left uh, some uh, folded books. So we also know a lot of uh, a lot about political history of Aztec Empire. Okay, however, at Teotihuacan, there's no written record, and there's no uh, king's portrait or uh, tombs. We have no information. So archaeology is the only way to uh, investigate uh, the political history of Teotihuacan. And I hope you <coughs> got the idea that the Teotihuacan is not Aztec, Teotihuacan is not Maya, got it? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so since we don't have a uh, written record, we don't know uh, which ethnic group uh, built Teotihuacan. For example, Maya civilization was built uh, by Mayan language speakers, and Aztec empire was built by Nahuatl speakers. But at Teotihuacan, at the time of at the times of Aztecs, uh, Teotihuacan was already ruined, and Aztec people thought that the site of Teotihuacan was built by the gods. So we don't know, we know nothing about Teotihuacan, <coughs> and also, of course, we don't know, uh, we don't have any evidence of or well, direct evidence of kings. So we don't know much about political organization. 
<coughs> so as I said, archaeology is the only way to uh, invest oops, sorry, <coughs> investigate our political organization and history at Teotihuacan. Okay, now Teotihuacan is located in the basin of Mexico. So here is Mexico City and Teotihuacan is here. And these lake systems existed uh, in pre-Hispanic pre times. However, uh, the Spaniards drained uh, these lakes. So uh, at this point, we have some portion of here and here, but now uh, all the land is under Mexico City, okay? <coughs> and this is a map of the city of Teotihuacan. And as you see, it's very uh, clearly planned uh, city, like our city. Uh, we can see a semi-grid system. And here is the Central Avenue, Street of the Dead, and at the end of the street, uh, there's a moon pyramid. Here's another famous pyramid called Sun Pyramid. And here's another uh, pyramid called Feather Serpent Pyramid. And just for the sake, for <coughs> sake of comparison, this is uh, the map of Tikal uh, in Maya region. And you can see the difference. <coughs> the city of Teotihuacan was very dense, you see. All these squares are uh, apartment compounds uh, that I will explain uh, later on. So commoners uh, basically lived in uh, these square uh, houses. And in contrast here, the central core of Tikal and these black uh, dots are houses, very dispersed. So they had agricultural fields nearby However, at Teotihuacan, although most of the residents are agriculturalists, uh, they had to commute to uh, their fields. <coughs> okay, here is the moon pyramid. Have you seen it? Yep, good. Okay, and this is a street of the dead uh, viewed from the top of the moon pyramid. <coughs> and here you can see the sun pyramid. And along this street of the dead, there are many uh, oh, sorry, structures, uh, buildings. <coughs> and this is uh, another pyramid called Feather Serpent Pyramid uh, because here we have uh, Feather Serpent sculptures. Okay. <coughs> and uh, there have been uh, controversies about uh, the political organization and uh, rulership at uh, Teotihuacan. <coughs> A group of archaeologists argued that Teotihuacan was organized corporately, so, uh, which means uh, the political organization was, uh, well, power was shared by uh, many different groups of people, not only by the king. Okay? And another group of uh, archaeologists argued that <coughs> Teotihuacan was like Maya uh, kingdoms or Aztec empire. There was a king and he exerted a strong power. However, uh, so far we don't have any royal tombs. We don't have murals that depict uh, kings. And architecturally, we, we are not sure where was a royal palace. So as I said, we don't know uh, many things about Teotihuacan. So first question is uh, about diachronic changes in state power. Uh, the state power was centralized like Aztec Empire or Maya kingdoms or decentralized. And second question is about diachronic changes in the organization of ruling elites. So if there was strong king or maybe there were several many kings and to do uh, this. Uh, I'm going to look at labor and material resources uh, used for construction, urban construction. And this is uh, the chronology of Teotihuacan. Unfortunately, we use uh, many weird names for phase. <laughs> As you see, Patlachique, Tzacuali, Mikautli, Tlamimilolpa, Cholalpan, and Metepec. And basically, uh, Teotihuacan state was formed uh, 
in transition from Takwali to Mikautori phases. And uh, around uh, 380, 300, uh, there was urban renewal, which I will explain later on. And eventually, the state collapsed around 650. And I assume it's hard to uh, keep up with these names. I decided to use just early, middle, <laughs> late. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> Very simple. Okay. So before early period, there w the city existed, had existed already. And uh, there was a population of uh, about 6,000 to 80,000 people. And however, uh, these big pyramids and streets of the dead were constructed uh, later. And we, so far, we have some evidence of uh, small scale structures uh, here moon pyramids, sun pyramid, and under uh, the feather serpent pyramid. But most of the structures or buildings were uh, raised when they built uh, these apartment compounds. So although you did, you can't find any, uh, well, not many evidence of earlier structures. Okay. <laughs> and this is the moon pyramid. Uh, well, we started uh, moon pyramid, the moon pyramid project in 98, and I was one of the members, and we found uh, seven superimposed pyramids. So it was not built at once. It started from uh, this small pyramid, and it was rebuilt several times, and eventually they got <coughs> the pyramid of this size. And <coughs> this is a three-dimensional reconstruction of the first pyramid. You're very small. And next one, almost same. And third one, very small. So uh, before the early phase, uh, there was no, <coughs> no like strong uh, authority uh, to Tiwakam. Okay, and uh, during the Atsakwali phase, which is just previous of early phase, uh, population migrated uh, to Teotihuacan due to volcanic eruptions here and here. That's why population was nucleated at Teotihuacan. However, uh, they, could <coughs> they could have gone to other places, and we don't know exactly why they moved to Teotihuacan, not the other places. And, okay, for uh, this research uh, to uh, investigate the changes in state power, I selected uh, excavated structures here, uh, six structures, moon pyramid and some other here, here, and some pyramid. And uh, this complex is called uh, Ciudadela. Uh, the feather serpent pyramid is just this small one. And here's another uh, complex, mega complex, called uh, Street of the Dead Complex. And <coughs> to investigate uh, the power of the state, I uh, focused on the labor, uh, labor investment uh, for these monumental structures to build pyramids. How many people, how many days were invested? And <coughs> So labor investment can be used as a proxy uh, for uh, the degree and extent of power. As you are familiar, you know, people who are living in big houses usually are rich, right? Maybe not true, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, there's a specific measurement unit to calculate uh, labor investment, uh, which is person days. So for example, four person days here may mean one person working for four days, or two people working for two days, or four people working for one day. Okay. And to uh, calculate, to estimate labor costs, I decided to replicate a pyramid, small pyramid, using exactly the same materials, same techniques. So we didn't use any uh, like modern tools. <coughs> And through excavation, we already knew uh, how the pyramid was built. So using the exactly same procedure. Uh, so these are <coughs> stones, and uh, these are mud. And 
this uh, style of structure is called talu tablero, sloping the combination of sloping wall and vertical panel. This is uh, the style of Teotihuacan architecture. So we replicated uh, exactly talu tablero structure to estimate labor cost. And <coughs> I don't mean to explain like in details, but uh, <laughs> construction procedure can be divided into many uh, processes. So we uh, estimated each process uh, using uh, the, the same measurement unit, which is person days. <coughs> okay, here is the result. So do you remember early, middle, late? So during the early phase, uh, the most labor was invested here, as you can see. So just after the formation of the state, uh, they invested about like here, about nine, and here in the next phase, it was almost uh, 14, I think million, it's six by six, so million, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the labor investment decreased in the middle phase, then go down and collapsed. So this is something that you would expect. And uh, especially I wanna focus on here, the early phase, uh, most of the labor was invested for the construction of pyramids. And for example, this is a moon pyramid now we have a relatively big pyramid and a burial was associated with this new uh, pyramid. <coughs> Unfortunately, this guy was sacrificed as offering for the pyramid and many uh, green stone object, these are slate disc, which was probably mirror <coughs> were also offered, and jaguars, pumas, the many animals that were offered. And another burial, uh, it's hard to see, but here is, uh, I think 15 decapitated victims, so without heads, they were offered. Here you go. <laughs> okay, and another burial here, by the way, this is a fifth moon pyramid. And for this pyramid, four people were sacrificed. And as you can see, uh, all of them, uh, their hands were tied oops, uh, behind the back, okay? <coughs> and these are skulls. And we found uh, cervicals. So uh, in an an anatomically correct position, so these heads were decapitated. Okay. And here is another uh, feather serpent pyramid. Here, over 200 people were sacrificed. Okay, here, uh, this is uh, artistic reconstruction. So many people, their hands are tied on the back. And he has some uh, maxillary uh, uh, pendant. <coughs> also, you can see clearly see that their hands are tied. <coughs> so, <oops. coughs> uh, as seen these, uh, in these sacrifi sacrificial victims uh, who are offered for the pyramid, maybe we think uh, there was maybe a despotic ruler in this early phase. <coughs> However, uh, Okay. Uh, in the middle phase, this is a comparison between uh, the labor costs invested for the pyramid, these blue ones, and administrative and residential architecture. And as you can see, in the, uh, during the early phase, they invested mostly uh, for the pyramid. However, during the middle phase, they invested more on uh, well, not more, but more or less equal amount of labor uh, for administrative and residential architecture. And this is an example here, uh, the street of the dead complex. And here is a street. Oops. 
and this is uh, the west side of the, the complex. And originally, uh, in the early phase, they built only temples and some rooms. And, in, and during the middle phase, they raised the whole complex about two meters, then built uh, these many rooms. And we think uh, they were used uh, for uh, administrative purposes. So that suggests that uh, after uh, the despotic rulership, maybe during the uh, middle phase, we are looking, we are seeing something different. And I think uh, here we are seeing a development of bureaucracy. Uh, we see the internal division of political organization, which is reflected in architecture. <coughs> okay. So uh, now we kind of understand how uh, the state power changed over time. However, it's not enough. Strong state does not mean we commoners. So we should look at uh, the relationship between uh, ruling or dominant elite and commoners. So second set of question <coughs> is about diachronic changes in power relations uh, between ruling elites, intermediate elites, and commoners. <coughs> and also uh, to uh, what extent uh, state intervene to the planning and construction of apartment compounds. Uh, as I said, about uh, AD 300, uh, there was urban renewal and many apartment compounds were built for uh, commoners. And to do uh, this analysis, uh, I, in addition to these uh, structures in the central precinct, I used uh, excavated apartment compounds. And uh, unfortunately, uh, many excavated apartment compounds are of intermediate elite. And I have only one here, uh, La Ventigia 3, just one apartment compound of commoners. Uh, the reason is that uh, in these uh, intermediate elite apartment compound, there were murals. So that's why archaeologists wanted something fantastic always, right? So they look for murals and excavated these uh, apartment compounds. <coughs> OK, so uh, for the second set of questions, I combined three different uh, kinds of analysis. One is labor analysis, which is the same and analysis of cut stone blocks and lime plasters. These two materials were used for urban construction. Okay, so uh, most apartment compounds were built af after 8300, and we don't have evidence of earlier communal residences, so we cannot compare, unfortunately. So uh, we're gonna focus on middle and late, okay? So again, this is map. So these little squares are all apartment compounds. Uh, here are some examples of ex excavated compounds. As you can see, the layout is totally different among these compounds. There's no single exactly same uh, layout. And all these five compounds are of intermediate elite uh, Compounds and this one is the only one that belongs to commoners, and you can see that <coughs> the size of rooms is very small, right? Especially comparing with this one, they are very spacious. Okay, and this is uh, one of the intermediate elite compound at the Telco, and you can see here courtyard and some talu tablero temples and many rooms here, 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 here. And there are murals like these. These are uh, called uh, goddess mural. And here's another mural. This is a reconstruction, but still you can see uh, the sophisticated murals here, right? And here's another example. Uh, by the way, this is soldier and this is priest. But there's no murals of kings. 
OK, first, uh, as for the labor investment, here, uh, excluding pyramids, I just compared uh, residential and administrative structures. And so here, these are the central precinct dominant elite structures. And here are the commoners, commoner here and intermediate elite compounds. And this is a per resident labor investment. Uh, I standardized the total labor investment because uh, you know, if you have many people and larger space, the, the per capita labor investment uh, will not incre increase. So, so this graph is showing that there is no gap between uh, intermediate elite compounds and dominant elite uh, compounds. However, uh, some of, for example, this one, I cut, I cut it here, but it was like here very huge amount of labor. So uh, although the difference is gradual, we can see that uh, the power of state elites was stronger than intermediate elites. <coughs> and here is late phase uh, comparison. Uh, there are very few structures built in this phase. So just we have one here, Ciudadela, <coughs> and this is much uh, larger than any apartment compounds here. Okay. And what well, labor investment or labor cost tell you uh, many things about uh, the power. However, also we have to consider the labor organization. And uh, based on ethnographic and historical information, <coughs> uh, this guy, Udi, uh, made a typology of labor organization. So basically there are two uh, different types. One is here familial recruitment, which is uh, labor exchange between uh, people of equal statuses. And this one, custodial recruitment, is about unbalanced exchange. So powerful people ask you know, low status people to help building their houses. And uh, <coughs> so it's, not equal exchange, it's unequal. And the two systems, COVID systems, it's, about, it's like a labor tax. So you offer your labor to the state. And festive custodial, you offer labor and you get food in exchange, which, is, which sounds better. <laughs> so uh, it should be clear that uh, Teotihuacan State employed COVID systems because of the large amount of labor. Uh, maybe they tax each person or adult male to get labor. And we are not sure about apartment compounds. Usually uh, in agrar agrarian societies, residents build, uh, build, build their houses by themselves. However, uh, labor investment, well, based on my estimate, is huge. For example, to build a uh, like average size apartment compound, you need 600 to uh, 1,300 people. Do you have like 1,000 relatives? <laughs> Do you? Maybe not. So you have to ask somebody, but uh, how, how you can afford? So here I think, <coughs> uh, oops, uh, state, helped, uh, well, state subsidized some labor. And uh, here is a comparison of one of the apartment compounds here, uh, 164,000 person days, and Copan was one of those Maya kingdoms, and first looter used the labor of 175,000 person days. And these values can be transferred to uh, these numbers here, as you can see, there's not much difference. So uh, this apartment compound invested, invested uh, almost the same amount, amount of labor that one of the Maya kings invested. How come? So uh, my tentative 
uh, conclusion is that labor force and construction materials for apartment compounds were subsidized by the state. And we can examine this uh, hypothesis by looking at uh, the organization of the production of cut stone blocks and plaster. Okay, here, cut stone blocks, they were used for stairways <coughs> and also as steps that surround a uh, plaza. And also uh, as, a, as a step for rooms and also for sculptures. These are all cut stone blocks. They're very expensive. So that's why uh, the consumption of uh, these cut stone blocks implies uh, the degree and extent of power. So uh, you don't have to read all this uh, table, but here, early, middle, and <coughs> late phases, <coughs> and just focus on here, the late phase. So during the early and middle phases, here is the central precinct structures. So the state uh, elites almost exclusively use cut stone blocks. However, during the late phase, none was used for state structures. Instead, these intermediate elites used many cut stone blocks. And even here, commoners, <coughs> resident, residents also use cut stone blocks. So here we can see some substantial change from middle to late. And also I did a provenance study where uh, these rocks came from. So I sampled, here is a Teotihuacan, I sampled mountains around Teotihuacan and also uh, some distant regions here, Texcoco region. And I did chemical analysis called X-ray fluorescence and uh, using st statistics, uh, analyzed the possibility of any archeological uh, rocks came from any source around Teotihuacan or in these distant regions. Okay, and Okay, here is a summary, local rocks and non-local rocks. <coughs> and focus, focus on here. So this is commoners residence, La Ventija 3. They were poor. And uh, they, ha they couldn't use uh, rocks to build their houses. They used adobe, uh, just sun-dried mud. And also uh, they used lime plaster, but there was not enough to plaster everything. So they were poor, but even though they were poor, they used cut stone blocks brought from non-local areas. How come? Just imagine you're poor, you don't have money. Would you go to, for example, from here to Arizona to get rocks? No, right? How did they get rocks from distant regions? And this is a plan of La Ventia 3. Uh, so some of the walls uh, were made of rocks, but many walls were made of adobe. That implies the social status of the resident. <coughs> so uh, my conclusion is that state, again, subsidized uh, materials. So they collected uh, cut stone blocks, then we distributed to uh, the residents. So summarizing, uh, during the middle phase, the state controlled uh, the procurement and distribution of cut stone blocks <coughs> and uh, possibly subsidized some uh, blocks to apartment compounds. And during the late phase, in contrast, state did not use any cut stone blocks. And some intermediate elites here coordinated uh, the procurement of non-local uh, rocks, cut stone blocks. And but locally available rocks were procured independently uh, by each compound or group of compounds. Uh, well, I did not go into details, but uh, I saw some differences in sources among 
different compounds. OK, so now lime plaster. Uh, do you know lime plaster? Uh, it's made of uh, limestone. So first, you burn limestone to get quick lime, which is calcium oxide, and then add sand and water to get uh, calcium hydro hydroxide. Uh, then put uh, the paste on the wall or floor. It's like a paint. Uh, it's about uh, a millimeter thick or up to five, five millimeters. <coughs> so I uh, focused on the quality and recipe of these lime plasters, how they were produced within the city. Uh, because uh, lime did not exist in the Teotihuacan region. Here, the Teotihuacan, Teotihuacan Valley, there's no limestone here. Teotihuacan Valley is totally volcanic and limestone is sedimentary rock. <coughs> so uh, they imported limestone or lime from Tula region and here another Sumpango region. Uh, this is one of the examples of apartment compounds. As you can see, all, almost all the structures were plastered. They are white. And uh, also the murals that you saw are uh, drawn on top of lime plasters, okay? So here, very thin, thin coat of uh, uh, plaster. And uh, it's better than mud floor, for example. Do you know why? Exactly, it's water resistant. So it's much better than mud floors. And of course, people prefer to use lime plaster so I use uh, cathode luminescence analysis and petrographic analysis on thin sections. So well, you don't have to understand the details. Uh, basically, I made a thin slice of these samples and looked at uh, the samples under microscope to identify uh, the composition, the recipe, what kind of materials are used to make plasters. Okay, and result first early to middle phases, <coughs> the quality was variable. However, there was no difference between central precincts and abutment compounds. And the recipe was highly homogeneous, almost identical. So that implies centralized, centralized control of lime pasta production. And these are examples of uh, lime plasters from early phase. So this is the surface of plasters. Uh, they were made of uh, almost exclusively of lime. No sands were added. So just lime. And these are micrographs taken under cathode luminescence. And these red or yellow uh, particles uh, indicate uh, incompletely calcined limestone. So firing temperature was not very high to make lime. That's why these samples uh, contain this incompletely fired, uh, fired limestone. Okay, and in the next phase, uh, middle phase, uh, now quality was very high and also recipe was homogeneous. So we <coughs> continue uh, seeing the centralized, very highly centralized control of the production of lime plaster. And here are uh, some examples. <coughs> uh, by the way, uh, this is from the central precinct and this is from uh, apartment compound. And now they added volcanic ash here. These small particles are volcanic ash or tefla. <coughs> and here you can see there are not many red or yellow particles. So now limestone was fired at higher temperature and to make good quality lime. And even uh, commoners, re uh, commoner residents at La Ventija 3 use this kind of lime. So recipe is the same, exactly the same. And there was no quality difference between central precincts and apartment compounds. And we can see the transition from uh, 
this uh, early phase composition to middle phase composition. Uh, here is uh, one of the structure in, within the central precinct, and this was the original floor, and this floor was raised about a meter. Okay, so it's not like tunnel. It, archaeologists excavated and left like this. Okay, and here, from here to here, the composition changed. You can see. And this is one of the apartment compounds. Same from early phase composition to middle phase. So composition was highly homogeneous. And now late phase, the last phase of Teotihuacan period, quality was ve very variable. Uh, so there's no uh, like good quality line plasters. And uh, also, uh, however, there was no difference between central precinct and apartment compounds. And as for the recipe, uh, very, very variable. There's no like homogeneous recipe in this phase which implies there were multiple producers which were not under centralized control. <coughs> and we can see uh, some of the variation here. Uh, this is area structure and this uh, temple was covered by later structure while the upper part was destroyed later on. But we can see, we can see the changes over time of the line plus uh, composition here. And this is the first one, second one, and the last one. And here is a cathode luminescence micrographs. <coughs> so as you can see, all these three are not the same. For example, this composition is very similar to middle phase composition. Very good quality lime with volcanic ash. However, in the second uh, plaster here, we see some incompletely calcine limestone fragments. And here also. And in this last phase uh, plaster, we don't see any, well, a little bit, but not many volcanic ash. So the composition changed uh, constantly. And also there was variation among different compounds. And for example, this is one of the compounds, Sakwala and Atetelco. So here, a Sakwala sample has many incompletely calcined limestone fragments. However, here, we don't see any good quality lime. Okay. And one of the compounds called Iayawala here, I got sample from the main floor here, and it was surprising. Okay, so as you can see, there are many big chunks of incompletely calcined limestone fragments. So this is one millimeter, so it measures several millimeters. It's big. And I found this composition only at this compound. And this means uh, Yayawala residents use uh, low-fired lime. So it's possible that they procure lime from different sources, different from lime that, that was used for other compounds. So there is no central, centralized control. Okay. So summarizing, uh, during the middle phase, uh, the state control, uh, the production and distribution of lime plasters, and possibly subsidized lime plaster uh, to apartment compounds. Because, for example, as we saw, uh, poor residents like at La Ventija Street, they had access to good quality lime. They were poor. I don't think they could get, uh, they could get uh, good quality lime by themselves. So like cut stone blocks, I think the state government subsidized these construction materials to uh, commoners. <coughs> and during the late phase, 
there is no central control, and it is highly likely that there were multiple uh, lime, produ lime cluster producer producers. So uh, putting together all this evidence, uh, maybe you are confused by now. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> so during the early phase, uh, well, we don't have evidence of commoners' residence, but we can see that uh, as for the labor, highly centralized, and most labor was invested for uh, temples and pyramids, not residences. Okay, <coughs> and cutstone blocks was uh, were almost restricted to central precinct. And we can see also the centralized control of the procurement and distribution. Okay, and as for the plaster, also it was restricted to the central precinct. And along, along with the evidence of sacrificial victims, we can guess that there was very highly centralized uh, state topped by maybe despotic looters. Okay, in contrast, uh, during the middle phase, labor was decentralized. Many labor was invested uh, to, for apartment compounds, not just for pyramids. And also, uh, almost the same amount of labor was invested for administrative and residential architecture. Okay. And as for the cutstone blocks, we still see the centralized control, however, state subsidized this material to apartment compounds. And same can be applied for plaster. It was, there was centralized production. However, state subsidized lime plaster to apartment compounds. So what, what does that mean? Here, we see very strong infrastructural power. So the state government invested huge amount of labor and materials in the public spheres. So it's like uh, our modern bureaucratic system. They, for example, build roads, sometimes houses, right? And also, uh, however, as we saw uh, in the labor difference between uh, commoners' residences and central precinct, still there was a high, highly centralized authority of the state. So <coughs> it's not the same as like corporately organized political structure. Uh, maybe there was a king and also a strong bureaucracy here. And finally, during the late phase, <coughs> labor was highly decentralized <coughs> and cutstone blocks were restricted to some of the intermediate elite compounds. And lime plaster, there was no central control, so state lost their power, their control. And possibly some apartment compounds organized the production of lime plaster. So this, all this implies, <coughs> first, uh, reduce state power. And next, possibly competition for power among ruling and intermediate elites. And it is very possible that these intermediate elites were originally bureaucrats during the middle phase. And they rose for power. And similar situation, can be seen, for example, in the modern Japan. I don't know if you're familiar with Japanese politics, but uh, you know, Japanese government, you know, how they try to uh, relieve earthquake and tsunami damage. They're like stupid. <laughs> 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 I'm very sad to say this, but you know, because uh, 
politicians don't have power, but you know, the policies and politics were dominated by bureaucrats. And they were sort of competing for power you know, to make policies. So maybe we can, we are looking at the same situation here. You know, politicians, rulers, kings, and bureaucrats competing each other and eventually collapse. And I hope Japan will not collapse soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of my presentation. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.